Welcome back to Supplemental Sense. After a long layoff, I'm back with a video I've wanted to do for quite a while. It's on statins. It's the greatest scam in medical history. Here is why I say this. The leading cause of death in the United States stems from heart disease. Heart disease kills almost one in four adults. And when there's a problem this size, there's money to be made. The cholesterol-lowering drug Lipitor is the most sold drug of all time. Many other statins rank very high on the list. This would make statin drugs the most important drugs ever. And while statins are very good at lowering cholesterol, the problem is they do not prevent heart disease and many times contribute to heart failure. So let's take a look at what statins actually do. Statins affect the mevalonate pathway, and this is the pathway in which cholesterol is created in the body. Now cholesterol is actually one of the very last processes in this pathway, while the statins throw a wrench in it right off the bat. So other key compounds are also being inhibited, things like CoQ10, the dolichols, and the glycoproteins, which are very vital for optimal health. So what does cholesterol actually do? Well, cholesterol is a sterol, and sterols are necessary for production of our steroidal hormones. Um, things like testosterone and DHEA and pregnenolone, all of these necessary hormones are only possible because of cholesterol. All cells in the body are made from cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually a free radical fighter, so it's an antioxidant. Now, the immune system is very dependent on cholesterol to repair damaged cells. Let's say you go out and get some rays to raise your vitamin D. But without cholesterol, that vitamin D that gets on your skin will never be synthesized and used in your body. We also need cholesterol for our bile production and bile acids. So. The good, the bad, and the big lie. We've all heard about HDL and LDL, the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. Well, these are in fact not even cholesterols at all, but lipoproteins, or the carriers or transporters for cholesterol. Cholesterol is all the same. It's one singular thing. There are not different types of cholesterol. There are different carriers, though. Since the majority of our cholesterol is made in the liver, the LDL carriers will scoop that up and ship it out to all the tissues throughout the body, to wherever it's needed for repairs or there's inflammation, whatever's going on, the LDL brings it out to those spots. Once it's done, the HDL carriers swoop in, pick them up, shuttle them back to the liver once again. So both HDL and LDL are equally necessary for your health. You can't have one without the other. Now since LDL is the one that gets all the bad rap, I kind of wanted to focus on that a little bit more, uh, let you know all of the good benefits of having LDL and why it's such a horrible idea to suppress this lipoprotein. Steroidal hormones aren't produced without LDL. So this means lower testosterone, poor adrenal glands, and a hormone imbalance. Also, you're putting yourself at more of a risk for a compromised immune system and chronic inflammation. So let's take a look at a few of the things you can expect from your statin. I broke this down by gender, but these side effects are interchangeable, so they'll occur in either male or female, it doesn't matter, but based off of what each gender is more interested in. I decided to list those off in that order. Now for guys, lower testosterone. Like I mentioned before, statins are going to put a huge hit on your testosterone levels and that's about the last thing that any guy wants to have. Um, but a close second is muscle mass. Statins are going to be very catabolic, so it's muscle wasting. Um, you will lose a lot of that mass very fast, faster than you would with normal aging. Uh, you're going to have a decline in cognitive function. Um, things like dementia and Alzheimer's are a bigger risk when you're on a statin. 
Also, lower energy and adrenal fatigue are symptoms. Um, all of these things here are all tied into testosterone, so it's almost like it's uh, all wrapped into one big problem for a man. And then finally, the weakened immune system, which nobody wants, um, kind of makes you susceptible to all kinds of sicknesses that are out there. And then for the gals, weak and brittle bones are a big one. I know women are always trying to strengthen their bones, taking calcium and magnesium supplements, but it's bound to happen on a statin. Uh, slower carbohydrate and fat metabolism, so possible weight gainer, you know, throwing off your, your metabolic system there. Uh, muscle fatigue, muscle pains. And then there's the collagen synthesis or aging. Um, it's going to make your skin look a lot older, a lot faster when you're not getting that collagen synthesis. And then you have all the hormonal imbalances that this causes, which can bring on all sorts of different emotions and depressions and you know list is endless so you may be asking what about dietary cholesterol and what about the whole clogged arteries from eating all this cholesterol well eating or abstaining from cholesterol containing foods has no bearing on your bodily levels the average meat eater only consumes about 10 percent of their cholesterol so that means 90% of their cholesterol was made in the liver. So if you're eating it or not, your body's going to know what it needs for that cholesterol, and it's just going to produce based on what you're not eating. Now the whole clogged arteries thing, it's only possible when these LDL particles oxidize or they come in contact with free radicals. So if you're somebody that has chronic inflammation or biochemical imbalances, your body knows that it needs to produce more cholesterol and ship that out to the tissues that are affected. So you're going to have a higher LDL number. You're going to have more LDL particles racing throughout the body to help heal yourself. Um, if you eat a lot of trans fats and high sugar foods, these LDL particles are much more prone to oxidize. And also when you have a mercury or fluoride toxicity built up in the body, uh, you're going to be producing a lot more cholesterol and having that shipped out as well. So that's another way that these LDL numbers can get very high and out of control. So let's say you're very health conscious and you don't take medications, but you like to uh, do it the alternative, you know, holistic way, and you're looking for some supplements for controlling that cholesterol. Well, those are also no better than the drugs. Many of them do the same thing as the drugs, and they actually did make a prescription drug from red yeast rice, uh, which is a natural statin in itself. And I think even the mainstream medicine demonizes red yeast rice, not for the fact that it could be dangerous, but for the fact that it's cutting into their share of the profits. Um, so that's one that you definitely want to stay away from. The other thing that I hear a lot about is taking niacin, very high dosages, which does lower cholesterol and does raise the HDL levels in the body, but doing that long term can build up homocysteine, which is a much bigger tell for heart disease than even high levels of LDL would be. Then you have your soy protein. Uh, many times that is going to be genetically modified. I think over 90% of all soy is GMO. So stay away from that one certainly. Uh, flax seeds are another one that's talked about. Uh, they contain linoleic acid and that is an omega-6. Omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Um, so just aiding in that inflammation, that chronic inflammation, is going to cause a skyrocket in your LDL particles. So finally, the nutrients that strengthen and protect the heart. Now some of these here you probably already know about, but other ones I'm sure not many people have even heard about. Uh, CoQ10, 
I think many people recognize that if they're on a statin or a red yeast rice, they should be taking CoQ10 because that's being inhibited. But ribose, magnesium, and L-carnitine work synergistically with the CoQ10 and help producing the ATP, you know, the energy of the cells of your body. Um, all four of those together are really going to help with your heart. Obviously, your heart is using a good share of the ATP or cellular energy. Now, omega-3 fish oils are extremely important. Uh, ones like cod liver oil, krill, uh, calamari has very high levels of DHA, and that would be the more important strain of the two main omega-3 strains. And then even your regular mixed fish oils, you know, the anchovy, sardine, mackerel, any of those things are going to be helpful. And you have the B vitamins. Preferably a B complex is the best thing to take because B vitamins need to be balanced out. Um, taking a singular B vitamin is never a good thing. Um, I know a lot of people like to take B12 all by itself, which is great, but it could be much better and more optimal for your health if you're taking the full complex of them. But specifically, B6 or P5P, the coenzymated B6, and B9, which is folate, you don't want to take folic acid, you want the folate. And then the B12, you're going to want to have the methylcobalamin form of B12 and not the cyanide bound cyanocobalamin. And then we have trimethylglycine, and it's also called TMG. And trimethylglycine is very helpful in your methylation cycle. When you have a dysfunctional methylation cycle, you're more prone to build up high levels of homocysteine which I mentioned before is a big risk for cardiovascular health and for you know heart disease so um, you know the B6 the B9 the B12 and TMG are great for making sure you don't get that buildup of homocysteine very heart healthy now the other thing PQQ uh, is also another part of the quinine family like CoQ10 PQQ works on regenerating new mitochondria where the ATP is made, um, also repairing old mitochondria, uh, very anti-aging, um, it has many other benefits besides just the heart health. So let's run down a few of the final points, a lot of the key things I talked about. Statins are a multi-billion dollar industry. There's a lot of money to be made in statins and doctors are not afraid to push them out on anybody that shows any little sign that they could be on one or need one. Uh, there's no good or bad cholesterols. Cholesterol's cholesterol. It's one singular thing and it happens to be very anti-inflammatory and immune boosting. Eating cholesterol containing foods doesn't make any difference in how much you're gonna have in your body. There are many other factors that determine that, but what you eat doesn't have anything to do with it. Unless the things you're eating are processed foods that contain lots of trans fats and are very high sugar, then yes, they could have a big effect on you. Um, cut out those processed foods, anything that's packaged or in a box. Um, even, you know, going to restaurants, they're going to be cooking with a lot of omega-6s, a lot of those vegetable oils, you know, the canola oils and soybean oils are much cheaper than your olive oils or real butter. So, you know, try to watch that stuff and try to boost your omega-3s at the same time um, with some of the fish oils, um, the krill oils. Uh, make sure that you're getting that ratio more to a natural balance than what most Americans have. Thank you for watching. This is another episode of Supplemental Sense.